Hey folks, Nick here from another BookTube channel, and today I'll be reviewing The Wolfen by Whitley Stryber. Back in February, I went to an event uh, at the Strand in New York City that featured Stephen Graham Jones and Paul Tremblay in conversation. And there was a Q&A, and I got to ask them a question about the authors and books that influenced them. And Jones mentioned The Wolfen uh, in, as part of his response. So when an author gives you a direct recommendation like that, you have to follow through uh, on, on checking it out. And I was especially happy because this book turned out to be a really, really great time. Let's get into it. Becky Neff and George Wilson are NYPD detectives that could not be more different from each other. Neff is a young upstart with a bright future in the department, already breaking barriers that previous women have not been able to breach on the police force. Wilson is a grumpy veteran who has burned too many bridges to ever be considered for a promotion and is none too pleased to be partnered up with a woman. Nevertheless, the two manage to work well together and are the top detectives in the city. But the unlikely duo may have met their match when a string of violent murders terrorized the city in which all of the victims appear to have been torn apart by big, nasty, pointy teeth. Their superiors, in traditional The Mayor from Jaws fashion, force the book closed on the case, blaming wild dogs. But Neff and Wilson see things are not that simple, and they may have stumbled upon an ancient danger that's been hiding in the shadows for centuries. If it's not clear, this is a werewolf book, and it's a really interesting one that felt quite different from any other werewolf story that I've seen before. For one thing, this is presented very much as a police procedural, with the majority of the point of view being from those who are investigating the murders. I thought that that was a cool angle to approach this type of story with, so instead of it just being regular people thrust into this situation, it's people who have like forensic background or investigative backgrounds and who have access to special equipment that can help them. It just made this werewolf story feel very distinct, which I liked. I was also really surprised to discover that this was Whitley Schreiber's first novel because I think his writing is killer right off the bat. I'd like to read to you the opening paragraphs as they really succeeded in sucking me in and setting the tone for the rest of the book. In Brooklyn, they take abandoned cars to the Fountain Avenue automobile pound adjacent to the Fountain Avenue dump. The pound and the dump occupy land shown on maps as Spring Creek Park proposed. There is no spring, no creek, and no park. Normally, the pound is silent, its peace disturbed only by an occasional fight among the packs of wild dogs that roam there, or perhaps the cries of the seagulls that hover over the stinking, smoldering dump nearby. The members of the police auto squad who visit the pound to mark derelicts for the crusher do not consider the place dangerous. Once in a while, the foot-long rats will get aggressive and become the victims of target practice. The scruffy little wild dogs will also attack every so often, but they can usually be dealt with by a shot into the ground. Auto pound duty consists of marking big white X's on the worst of the derelicts and taking Polaroids of them to prove that they were beyond salvage in case any owners turn up. It isn't the kind of job that the men associate with danger, much less getting killed. So Hugo DeFalco and Dennis Houlihan would have laughed in your face if you told them they had only three minutes to live when they heard the first sound behind them. I really like those opening paragraphs. I think it shows off Whitley Stryber's ability to add a lot of flavor to his prose without being like um, uh, like flowery in his language. Like I like the bit that the park is a proposed name, like Spring Creek Park, but there there are there is no spring, there's no creek, there's no park. It gives you this world building of like they're planning to gentrify the area soon. But right now, it's just like a derelict dump. Uh, so it's, it's, it paints a really nice picture. I want to talk about the werewolves now for a little bit, which I personally don't consider a spoiler because I'm not going to be talking about the plot at all. But if you want a total mystery in regards to the rules of these werewolves, 
you might want to skip ahead to this timestamp here. I thought the depiction of the werewolves was pretty interesting because we never get any description of them not as wolves. The human characters only ever see them in wolf form, and the few times that we ever actually get to like spend time with the wolves from their perspective, they think of themselves entirely as wolves. So we never actually get any indication in this book that the werewolves are ever in human form, at least not that I picked up on. And to me, that adds an extra layer of brutality to these creatures, because I really felt as though they were uncontrollable beasts with no remorse, just unstoppable killers from head to toe. It really ramped up the sense of danger, knowing that these werewolves could lash out and kill any character, basically in the blink of an eye. I definitely see where Stephen Graham Jones was influenced by the Wolfen, particularly considering his book Mongrels, which was a really good book about a family of transient werewolves. I do think that the movie adaptation of this was also a big influence on him, as it builds onto the werewolf lore quite a bit. Uh, in that one, it forms a connection to Native American shapeshifters. Uh, I did watch the movie shortly after reading this, uh, by the way, and it was pretty good. Uh, it's not as impactful as other 80s werewolf movies, but it's worth your time if you want to have a scary movie night and you've already seen American Werewolf in London or The Howling and, and the, more, the more common werewolf movies of that era. The only portion of The Wolfen that I didn't really care for was the shoehorned-in flirtation between Neff and Wilson, which I think was very much a product of the time period that this book was written. I enjoy a good platonic male-female relationship in fiction, and because of their age difference, I thought there was a good opportunity here for like a father-daughter connection, so I was just kind of grossed out when they were expressing romantic feelings for each other. Both Neff and Wilson are strong characters individually and together, but I wasn't a fan of that part of the dynamic. The Wolfen is a very enjoyable read and I think stands out as a much better than average monster book. My arbitrary and subjective grade for The Wolfen by Whitley Stryber is 8 out of 10. Do with that what you will. If you've read this book, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. Thank you for spending some time with me today, but now... It's time to get back to reading.